Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl San Marie. For those of you who are already subscribed, thank you for subscribing. And for those of you who have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and leave some comments in the comment section so that I can answer any questions that you may have for me. So, in my last video about my crisis assignment that was in Massachusetts, during the assignment, I gave you guys an update of how it was going. I told you that it was going good and they were paying for everything, including my housing my car, and all of those good things. There was a plot twist. It kind of turned from good into a freaking horror story. So if you guys want to know more about that and my actual real life experience during this crisis assignment, then continue to watch this video. I officially started the contract October 17th and it ended January the 18th. Through the entire contract, we were working at all of these different facilities and guys, some of these facilities, no one should be working there, let alone staying there or getting taken care of. The first facility that I kind of want to talk to you guys about that I was just like almost going to hang up my coat and just walk out the door is a rest home that we were working at. So during my contract, we went to this rest home and then it seemed like it dragged on and on and on and on and on. We go in. Okay, everything's good. We're working there. So my first day there, I'm sitting down in a chair and I'm charting, writing nursing notes for the patients. So next thing you know, I see a little robot running across the floor in the kitchen. So I'm looking like I don't do rats. I have a phobia of rats. And I'm telling you really quick, I will turn into a big baby if I see one. It was not a good day for me. My anxiety was on 10 the entire shift. There was also bed bugs in every patient's bed in the facility. That facility was scary. That was 10 red flags out of all of the times that I realized, okay, maybe I shouldn't be here. So I was telling you guys how they were giving us like 12 patients to one nurse. We did assessments, we did treatments, we did Q3 and sometimes even Q4 vital signs. And it was just like not the ideal situation. So I was just stressed out because the most patients I've ever taken care of before was max was seven and that is a lot. So any nurses out there that's watching this video, you know exactly what I mean when they try to overload us with patients and they expect for us to call family members and answer the phone and do all this other stuff. Like we're just superheroes and we can just be in a thousand places at one time. But back to what I was saying. So I went from 12 patients to, okay, now you're going to get 20 patients. Oh no, that's not enough. So now you're going to get 27 patients. Oh no, come on, let me give you some more. So now you're going to get 32 patients, 32 patients with treatments, not only patients that are just like, these are all COVID patients. Guys, it was a pain in the butt and they thought that I was going to sit there and take care of all these patients. I ended up telling them I will not be taking care of all these patients by myself. You're going to have to call in someone else or I'm going to go home because I did not come here to lose my license. This is insane. You guys will not do this to your own workers, so you're not gonna do it to me either. So guys, you need to take up for yourselves. Don't sit and let somebody just treat you any kind of way. If you know something's not right, make sure you speak up because you're not gonna sit there and let someone take advantage of you just because you're a travel nurse. We came here to help. We didn't come here to be slaves. I'm sorry, I'm just being as real as possible with you guys in this video. I'm not saying that Massachusetts is a horrible place. I'm not saying that at all. So if you're from Massachusetts, I'm not saying that. I'm just letting you guys know my experience and how this entire assignment went with the company that I chose to be with. So now that I'm in Arizona, I kind of wanted to just give you guys a rundown of literally everything that happened while I was there in Massachusetts. So I told you guys how they were supposed to pay for everything, right? Well, it ended up being that they didn't pay for everything because... It was a COVID assignment. My family couldn't stay at the hotel with me. So I was threatened to be released from the assignment or fired for a lack of a better word. And I had a day to get my family out of the hotel and to move somewhere else. And then once we found somewhere to stay, they ended up saying that they would not pay for where me and my family were staying. 
and there's other nurses and CNAs that were on the travel assignment who told me that they were doing that for them. So that was just a moment where I kind of sat and thought like, should I really be here? Should I continue to be here if I'm not getting treated like other people are getting treated because it's not fair if they're going to pay for another person who's going to be not accepting the hotel and they're going to stay somewhere else with their family, but then they're not going to pay for mine. So I was upset about that as well. So it was like everything just started going down. Like it just started spiraling down and I was just like at this point I was over it. They were already overworking us and just putting so much on us and then had a nerve to go and just mistreat me and give other people things and then lie about it. It's like I didn't even bring up the conversation that I wasn't getting my housing paid for. I overheard these other nurses talking about how they told them that they would do this, this, and that for them. And then I just buzzed into the conversation because I was like, well, that's not fair that they're not going to pay for my housing, but they're going to pay for yours if you decide to not take the hotel. But anyways. I'm just glad to be gone. I'm glad to be in Arizona. I'm praying that this assignment is better because there's only so much stress we can take especially by going out risking our lives and taking care of these people and then to get treated like that like half the time some of these companies don't even care about you i will stop rambling about that and get to the next point i guess i won't go on and on and on about the negative stuff so one positive thing is during this last assignment that i did before i left I was able to work with individuals who were in the National Guard. So I thought that was pretty cool. Just being able to work alongside of those people in the National Guard and just seeing how they do things completely different. With my last assignment before I left, you guys don't know, but I ended up leaving a week earlier than what I was supposed to. And the reason why this happened is because of all the stress, I started to not feel well. I started to have symptoms that were considered COVID symptoms and I knew I didn't have COVID. I started having a little chest pain, I had headaches and a few other symptoms. So because I said that I had a headache that I couldn't kind of control with Tylenol, my blood pressure was fine. But I talked to my charge nurse and told him that I was having these symptoms and he was the one to recommend that I get tested for COVID. The test took five days to get results back from the urgent care. And some they told me that it would take three to seven days and usually they get all the results back on day three. I even sent this man like, screenshots because I don't like people to think that I'm lying. Like he tried to make it seem like as if I was lying, the, like the things that he was texting me. I would show text messages, but that's just like petty. But anyways, I literally did that almost every day. I sent him screenshots showing him that I didn't have results. I even called the urgent care multiple times to ask them if my results had came back in and they did not. So it's like, why am I stressing myself out? This is not in my control. Maybe this was something God was doing behind closed doors or like, you know, he didn't want me to be at work because he knew it was time for me to get out of here. So really technically I was only out three days for me being sick because they were also on call and just sitting on standby. I messaged him and I told him I got my results. And then I ended up going back to work, went to work, worked at the facility, got on the floor. I was okay that day. So the next day I woke up feeling really, really ill. Like I had a runny nose. I had um, chest pain. I was sneezing nonstop. So at this point I was like, whoa, these weren't the symptoms that I was having before. So I told their um, supervisor, I was like, I really, well, he came up to me and he was like, I hear you sneezing and stuff like that. You don't look like you feel good. And I told him, I was like, oh, well, to be honest, I really don't feel good. I haven't felt good the past few days. And I've already relayed this to my charge nurse, but I ended up still coming to work because I know my team needs me and they need help. Well, he calls and he was like, well, you don't need to be here. Basically telling me he's about to get ready to send me home. He calls my charge nurse and lets him know that he's gonna send me home and asking him if he had anybody else to come and replace me. Well, at the time we didn't because our team, they're turning around so fast. I'm telling you, like we have people that came one day, ended up leaving that exact same week because they didn't want to work in those conditions. And it was like, why did I sit here this whole time? I stayed because I was thinking about the patients and not about myself and what I was going through. But 
back to the stories he talks to my charge nurse and then my charge nurse calls me and he was like so what's going on with like this dry voice like he could care less about what the other person had just told him so i tell him exactly what i told the other person and then yeah, he was like does he have anybody else to work so he didn't at that point i just knew i was like okay he didn't even acknowledge the fact that i just told him that i feel like i'm gonna pass out he didn't ask me if i was okay or anything like that so i was just like okay no he doesn't have anybody else to come in he said he's gonna just take over the cart for me but i was gonna try to stay a little bit longer to help him like pass out some more meds before i leave and then like i'm still at this point trying to be helpful even though i don't feel good and I'm not getting appreciated at all for doing this, okay? So this whole time I was here in Massachusetts, I went out my way for these people, this company, even though they did me wrong from the start by making me like wait a month and a half to reimburse me for things and just not even paying for my housing and threatening to fire me when I'm a good worker, I go to work every day. I volunteer to work even if I don't wanna work. Like really, like I would rather be at home with my family and spend time with my babies and my husband. But I volunteer if nobody else wants to come in and work that I'll work for you and I had your back. So anyways, he calls me, he doesn't ask me how I'm feeling or whatever. So he was like, okay, well just let me know what they say. Like basically, cause I told him I was gonna go to the doctor and get uh, checked out. I sit in the car for a while because obviously don't wanna drive home and I end up freaking blacking out on the road because that's happened to me before from being stressed. So I sat there for a minute, called my husband, let him know everything that was going on. Went home, laid down, got there. 10 o'clock, no call, no text message from my charge nurse to see if I was okay, if I made it home safely. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, no call, nothing. Next day, he messages the group and says, all right guys, here's the schedule for blah, blah, blah. And it didn't have me on it. So at this point I'm like, okay. He hasn't asked me if I was feeling okay. And I had texted him like maybe at 11 o'clock that morning. And I was like, well, this is what the nurse practitioner has said. She thinks that I should quarantine, blah, 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 blah. She doesn't think I should be back at work as of right now. She said it because I had just got tested for COVID not too long ago. And she said since all my symptoms had gotten worse, that I needed to stay home and I needed to quarantine and not be at work, even if I have a negative test. He didn't respond to the message. And he sent that message to the group talking about the schedule with me not in it. So then I message him again right after he sends that message. And I'm like, um, did you get my message? And he goes, um, you need to talk that over with blank, 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 the company that I'm with. And I reached out to them and told them this and that. And basically they were like, oh, well, your charge nurse thinks that it's best for you to go home because he cares about you and he wants you to start feeling better. And I was like, he cares about me? And that's when I got upset. So at that point, that's when I like let it all out. I was like, well, if he cared about me, he wouldn't be ignoring my messages, first of all. He would have checked on me. And also, if he cared about me, he would have reached out to me before he reached out to you. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Like, okay, at this point, like I'm just so over this. And I was like, you know what? This is gonna make your company look bad. I will never work for a company like this anymore. And I will never just put my all into something knowing that I'm getting mistreated from the jump and still put my all, all of my eggs into this basket for this company. And they turn around and do me like this. So I was like, you know what? Okay, that's fine. I'll go home. And you know the reason why they wanted me to go home early is because they didn't want to pay me for being out for COVID because they're supposed to pay you for two weeks. So I was just like, thank you so much for everything you have done. Thank you for um, allowing me to come here and work for you, but I will never sign another contract for this company. Before I was trying to be nice and just be cordial with you guys and do what I came here to do. I even stayed out the whole contract because I like to honor my word, but I will not do this again, guys. I will not work for a company that does doesn't care about me. I wanted to let you guys know everything that I experienced. The only thing that made it good was being able to like travel to all these places close to Massachusetts and go and try the different foods. That was the only thing that made it good and me praying and my family being there. Cause it was like, once I got home, because of that long drive, like as soon as I saw my kids and my husband, like my body and my mind was just in a new place. And it was just like, thank you, Lord. But guys, I'm sorry for going on and on. I love you guys. I'm done with this video. Like I said, there was another video that I kind of gave you guys an update when it was actually going good. 
I linked it earlier in the video, but if, if you didn't get it the first time, it's gonna be right here or either right here. So thank you guys again. Thank you so much, so much, so much for watching all of my videos, for liking my videos, and for commenting on my videos. I have been watching you guys, and for my loyal subscribers, I have something coming for you very soon. So continue to watch these videos and give your girl the best feedback that you can give because it helps me grow and it helps me to make videos that you guys actually want. So I'm gonna end that video on this note. I'm sorry that the video was so negative, but like I just really had to document this experience so that you guys can see kind of what I went through and what you can expect with some companies. I just wanted you guys to get the real raw experience. I don't want you to just think, oh, it's just all rainbows and butterflies because it's not. So with that being said, guys, and I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click it right now and thank you again. I love you guys. Yeah.